to a video in IronCAD creating a sliding bracket from Too Tall Toby. It was dated um, March 7th, 2024. Uh, this model is fairly simple to do in IronCAD. Um, we're going to make use of just some of our drag and drop shapes, uh, one sketch shape to build this uh, uh, curved shape here, and then we'll just use some of our other shapes to do the cylinder here as well. So fairly simple model, not too difficult to do in IronCAD, but I'll just show you how this is done uh, using our design approach. Uh, a couple things that are interesting on this, um, you know, the way they uh, dimension this makes it a little bit a little more complex than it should be, <laughs> but basically they don't position where this uh, the circle part is at the top. It's based on these arc locations and the height uh, value here uh, to position this, and then this hole, of course, is positioned from the center here. So the trick is really to, to build this piece here. The rest of it is fairly easy, so let's go ahead and get started. I'll hop over into IronCAD. I'll move this over to my second screen so I can see those values as we model this. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to start in a millimeter scene unit here, and we're going to go ahead and drag and drop an extrude feature out. And uh, you can see we can rotate around to whatever orientation we like. And I'm going to set this one for the base uh, of that part. So when I select on this, one of our handles is already active, so I can just type in values here. So we know the overall length of this thing is 166. We know the width of this is 60. And we know the height, uh, before we do a taper on the bottom, is 14. So we're just going to set, go ahead and set that to 14 at this point. So now that we've got that base set, we're going to do this uh, curve piece here on this part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the sketch to do that. And we'll just do a uh, 2D shape here. And you can either place it on the front or the back. It doesn't uh, really matter here. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use actually this plain face here. And I'm going to put it on the back side here because I'm going to, it's going to come off uh, this direction towards me. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick uh, this face and then we can pick an origin point. It really don't matter, uh, but uh, I'll just put it up onto uh, this edge here uh, for, our, sorry, for our origin part. We'll select this uh, point here just to place it there. So that's uh, our sketch uh, location uh, that we're in here. So we can rotate this around with our cursor, or we can use this tool here, which is our flat view, which will give you the front. If you click again, it'll flip it over. And you can display things if you like. So if I want to display that part, I can see that as well. So now I can see what I'm designing here. So what I'm going to start off with is I'm just going to do a rectangle so I can access it on a ribbon bar or hit our S key and access the, the rectangle here. Uh, a couple things to note, if you're in IronCAD, uh, you have some behaviors for how you create constraints. So you can turn on uh, automatic constraints or some uh, certain constraints to be created for you. So, for example, I might want uh, coincident constraints and tangents to be created uh, automatically. You can also do length and width. All these uh, options are available automatic. You know, for a rectangle, it will give me the horizontals and verticals as well. So, if I want to turn that on, I select that and before I create the, the curve. So now we'll just go ahead and hit this, hit our rectangle command, and I'm just gonna place it here. And we know some values of this base is gonna be a 20 mil uh, millimeter high and it's 85 wide. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click and I'm gonna move and I'm gonna right click and I can type in those values there. So I say it's 85 wide and it's 20 high to, to drive that. So now we have our size here. Uh, for those things. So now we know that that's, uh, if you zoom in here, you can see that that's 20 for our curve dimension there, and that's 85. Uh, so we don't really need this uh, top curve here, so we can go ahead and just delete that. Uh, it's out of our way. Uh, so now we can just go ahead and draw this. So this, to, to, way, to draw this, multiple ways to, to draw this arc thing, but uh, the way I did it was simply just using a three point arc. Uh, I'm just going to click this point, and I'm going to click somewhere up here, and I'm just going to drag and drag this out. And what I'm going to do essentially add a tangency to it. So I know this needs to be tangent to here uh, as our starting point. And now we can go ahead and set some uh, values for this. So as arc, you can uh, you know click on these values. You also have uh, the radius in our property browser on the left. And one thing that's nice about this is there's an option here that you can change how this solves. So if you change this, it can move uh, this point and this this uh, start point here, for example, and move it, which would change our definition that we already typed in. So if you click on this, you can see all the various options of how it wants to solve. So in our case, we can want, we can allow the endpoint to move and uh, the uh, center can move on this case, but we don't want the start to move. So we're going to go ahead and select that option, hit OK, and then we can type in 90, hit OK, and that will change uh, the values for us. So if you look at our curve here, we're still at 85. And this is still set up at 20. If you look at that value there, it's telling you here's 20 uh, as well. So that's a good way to do that so you can make sure you maintain your geometry. Uh, next thing is this is just an offset uh, to the other side because it's at a 85. So we'll just go ahead and offset that curve, select our curve, type in our value of 85 inside of there. That will put it in the right location and we'll go ahead and hit OK. 
to create that. So that's going to create our offset for that curve. And last, we can just draw another three-point arc to basically draw, draw this arc here inside of here so we can draw this out. And you can see that it's going to get us right to the center there, and we're going to place that there. And notice it automatically created our tangencies for us to give us our shape. Okay, so now uh, we have uh, some of the things that we need set here. Uh, what we want to do is now is position the height of this thing. And in order to do that, we need to put a dimension there to, uh, to drive that. And we also need to make sure we lock some things so that this thing doesn't uh, solve uh, by moving other curves, in other, in other words. So one thing we're going to do is simply just lock this point here so we don't want that position to move because that's kind of our source of everything here. So then we'll go ahead and put a smart dimension from here to here and type in the value that we want for that, which is 90. Okay, so that basically will give us everything that we want. Again, you can refer to your curve dimensions. Again, this is 90 for that. This was set up to be 175. Uh, this will be their 20 value there, so 20 and 90 for those. Um, and that's basically our curve, and that will be 85, which is 42 and a half uh, of the ra uh, radius size for that value. So that's our base shape here, and we'll go ahead and hit finish to position that. So now we have our curve, and we know that curve needs to be uh, 10 millimeters off the edge there. So we'll just use our tri ball by hitting F10, move it in a linear direction 10, and we have that. So now we can simply extrude it. In this case, we're going to add it to this part, and uh, we're going to extrude that at a value uh, of 25. So that's 25 millimeters is the width of that particular shape. And now what it also adds is this uh, cylinder piece here. So instead of doing this, you know, a lot of people will draw that whole circle there and then extrude part of this, then come back and extrude the other part of that, then, you know, the other whole extrude the other part of that. Three extrudes do that. So I just thought it'd be easier to do is just build this one shape. And then we can just simply just drag uh, one of our cylinder shapes out. We can drag to that center point. We can drag to this and hold the shift key and it'll snap it either way. Those will put us in the center, and we can just snap this up to be tangent to that. So that basically gives us our next cylinder shape without doing any extra extrude commands or anything like that. So one of the nice advantages of the IronCAD's catalogs. Uh, next, uh, we need to set this value here, which is the total of it is 42. So and we already have something that's 25, so we just can type in 42 minus 25. That's our value. So our total uh, value of this is 42. So that gives us that shape, and last we can go ahead and add our, our through hole, which we'll just drop that on the center, and it's got a diameter of 46 for that. So we just type that in, and we have that shape. Uh, next, we can go ahead and do uh, some of our other uh, options here. We want to add uh, fillets to this thing, which has a radius of 15. So again, we can just go ahead and, and select all these, or we can pick one, right click, uh, blend command, we're going to pipe that to 15, and then we can just simply just select all these. Another way to do this, I think I've shown this in some of the other videos, since that's a single feature there, we could go to the uh, pillow shape properties and turn it on for all those uh, uh, side edges in one shot. Uh, that's another way to approach this, but this is uh, nice for this video. Um, next, we want to add our hole, which is positioned from the center of this. Uh, so what we'll do excuse me. In this case, I'm going to drop a hole out here. It doesn't really matter where it's at because I'll use the tri-ball to position that. So uh, our hole in this case is a 26 diameter hole and it's got an 8 depth. So we'll hit enter again to get to our uh, bottom handle down there and set that to 8 uh, for that. Uh, next, we know that this needs to be from this edge over here to my right uh, or the front of me. I'm just going to lock this and say we know the distance from that uh, Location there is uh, 22, we know that's 22, and we're going to do the same thing for this center. So we know the hole was positioned from an exact location from here. We'll lock this axis so it can only move in that direction. We'll right click and we'll do it at a distance from center point. Uh, we can select either one of these holes, it doesn't matter. We pick that and we know that needs to be 103 to place that. So that positions us where that hole needs to be in our model. Next, we just drop our last uh, through cylinder again on this guy. Again, you can if you can't get to that center point, like in this our viewing direction, you have to rotate the view or just hold the shift key in that edge. It'll put it in the center for us and the diameter of that is four. Okay, so that will build that particular shape for us. And last, uh, we need to add our draft to this thing. So what we can do is go to our feature command, go to draft faces. We're going to use this uh, uh, front face as our uh, neutral plane, I pick our bottom face as we're going to draft, and that's going to be a draft degree of 7 degrees, and it's already going in the right direction. 
and that's what we want. Hit enter, and we have our shape there. So that's essentially our model that we need. And now all we need to do is go into our properties. Uh, we want to know the density, uh, the mass in grams. So if you go to your units, we're going to change this from pounds to grams in our case. In this case, it has a density, a material density of 2700. Inside of there, we hit OK, and that'll give us a density of uh, our mass of 1424 for that model. So that's how you build this model in IronCAD. Uh, fairly, again, fairly easy to do this one, not too complex. And you can change your colors here if you like uh, to build that model, but that's just a, a couple ways to do it. Again, I was trying to show it to, to do the least amount of sketches that you need to do for some of the models. So hopefully everybody enjoys this one, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.